long, long ago, two grey gods crawled through a rift into this world and found it warm, lush, and unclaimed. It lacked only worshippers, so these gods, the Famhair, gifted apes with thought, shaping them into a clever, violent race, humanity. Great civilizations soon spread across the world, bloodthirsty, cruel, and strong in magic. Then the Famair turned their greedy eyes on Arborea and Canestia, the homes of the elves and dwarfs, who until then had hardly noticed the thinking apes or their gods. Thus began the All War. As the elves and dwarves banded together to defeat the Famair and their human armies. But the Famair were unkillable. All that could be done was drive them back through the rift. And even this cost the old races. All their gods and heroes died closing it. Worse, the farm here never stopped clawing at it from the void, rending the very fabric of the world. So, a song spell was made that would forever knit up the rift. And as punishment for their part in the war, a human king's daughter was enchanted so she might sing the song without food or rest for eternity. A thousand years on, and the maiden is forgotten, but the whispers of the famhair still invade the dreams of the ambitious, promising power and crimson glory. Three times have evil men heeded that siren call and sought the rift. And three times have they been defeated by ragtag and unproven heroes. Today the whispers wake a new evil, more devious than those that came before. Who this time will stand against it? What heroes this time will rise? The song I sing will tell the tale of a cold and wintry day, of castle walls and torch-lit halls, and a price men had to pay. When evil fled and brave men bled, the Dark One came to stay, till men of old for blood and gold had rescued a Scarabray. Smite all who befriend the old races. Hail, Henrit! He shall drive the elf and the dwarf back to their wretched holes. He shall burn wow, this, the uh... witches and... Let's turn off motion blur for starters. I don't know what god rays are. That's much better, but it's still a little laggy when I turn my head. So we'll try putting things on high. I think generally if I stick with foliage on low, that should be plenty, but... He shall cut out the tongues of the bards who sing of them! Father knows it is the followers of the old ways who are killing the people of Scarabray. My poor who are boy. sacrificing us to their what did dark he do? and bloody What did he do gods. that was so wrong?
Okay, it sort of lagged there when I went up to him. I thought it was going to activate dialogue automatically. Us, children, shall the sword father smite all who befriend the old races. I help the dwarf one. Man, for some reason he looks like 2D. Oh, that's a bad business. And no mistake. I... I don't understand. What did they do? What was their crime? Their crime? Existing was their crime. The Fatherites don't like our kind. Come on, before those paladins give us a second glance. I'll give them a second glance. And maybe a... Oh, oh here now! Save it! You'll only get yourself killed. And we need you. You're gonna save Scarabray. <laughs> ah, you're looking at me like you think old Robbie's had a few too many. Well, maybe I have. But this is no drunkard's fancy. You've been in my dreams seven nights now, and each one with the same end. You the hero, and me lost. They all start with some evil slithering out of the darkness. And you driving it back from whence it came. But I don't make it to the happy ever after. And there's a moment right at the end where you could save me. And instead you choose not to. You just turn away and leave me to be buried alive. Well, I'm sure there's a good reason. Well, maybe that means I shouldn't trust you. But you're the best hope we've got. So I guess I'll just have to pray that part's not true. Anyway, hero, let's get back to the Adventurer's Guild. I have a few words to say to the congregation. You could do without the guy still shouting during this dialogue scene. This way. Rabbi, the, the leader of the Adventurer's Guild, has temporarily joined your party. While in combat, Rabbi can attack with his axe and shalalag, shal shal shalalag, shalalag, as well as hand out health potions to his allies. This is Melody the Bard. She's your very first adventurer. You'll be able to replace her with a custom character shortly if you like. You can attack with a hatchet, gain powers by drinking boost, and play Sanctuary Score to shield her allies. You can bring up the party bar at any time by right-clicking. Hmm? Yes? <laughs> That's really weird. This window contains both the inventory and the character sheets for your entire party. From here, you can view your adventurous attributes and passives, equip gear, drink potions, eat food, and manage your inventory. You have multiple inventory pages in which to store items. You can flip between your inventory pages by selecting the circular page buttons or by using the left or right arrows. You can also see lore items or quest items by clicking on the associated button. On the left is the character sheet for your currently selected adventurer. Here you can see their attributes, passive abilities, currently equipped gear, and mastered abilities. Mastered abilities are abilities that have been permanently committed to memory by the adventure. You, gained mastered, you gain mastered abilities primarily through your skill tree. You can select which mastered ability you have active by opening the mastery book. You can change which adventure you're viewing by selecting their portrait at the bottom of the screen or by using arrows on either side of the character sheet. Lastly, you can, select, you can switch over to the crafting menu by clicking on the crafting button here. There is no crafting button there. It's over here. Brew potions, build tools, and cook food in the crafting window. Learn new crafting recipes by buying them from merchants and learning them through your adventure's skill trees. Let's back away from this yelling dude. You can't swing a cat in Scarabray these days without hitting a paladin. Not that I'm prone to swinging cats. Wards of elves! Terrifies dwarves! Protect yourself! How do I enter grid-based movement? I thought I saw that in the options here. Do I have to select that like before I begin the game? I don't know. That seems that seems weak. What a load of shite! Always a few who'll take advantage of hard times. Hot soup! Aha! Come here for soup, have you? Well, soup is not an adequate description for what you'll be getting. You'll be getting fulfillment, joy, the tender embrace of your mother's arms. This is not just soup, it is a revelation. 
a liquid epiphany. Heaven by the spoonful. There is no question that this soup is good enough for you. The question you have to ask yourself is, am I good enough for this soup? That's actually not easy. So you have to have the mouse over this area in order to scroll. This is not your scroll bar or anything. That's what I was trying to do earlier, I was trying to keep scrolling. Hmm. Uh, no. On consideration, you are not good enough for this soup. Ruffians. Okay. For all your talk about soup, you'd think that there'd be some soup in the cauldrons. Yeah, there's like no soup anywhere. Yeah, you 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 play along with your phantom soup. Oh, that's this. Trying to think if I should backtrack and really look over everything, but I think I'll be okay. I'm just trying to get somewhere quiet so I can read, continue reading, reading any tooltips. There's nothing to be gained fighting the Fatherites head on. There's another way. At least, I hope there is. Trust not the elf, nor the dwarf, nor the trow. Death to the elves! So thou the adventurer and the so-called... So, I've never actually played Bard's Tales 1 through 3, but I have played My Magic 2 through whatever, including the last one. The last one wasn't so great, so what I did was I kind of modded it to allow for more modern day interface options. Like, pressing a number would allow me to pick a character. I don't think you could do that by default. It was really obnoxious. You, you kind of had to like click everything. The interface was absolutely horrible, so I just sort of tweaked the interface myself. But yeah, I never played Bard's Tale. I have played, however, other games like Bard's Tale, like Wizardry, and games, and uh, old D&D Gold Box games. So this will be my first Bard's Tale. Too much for you, eh? <laughs> Got a weak stomach? You better get used to it. All a scarabrail bum before these priests are through. Alright, this, this may seem silly, but I'm stuck now. Do I just jump off? Spacebar doesn't seem to jump or anything. Song is seduction. Dance is depravity. Rhyme is ruin. Something's on the mini map here, but I can't seem to. Where am I supposed to go now? Adventurous saved this town. Round them up. That's what I say. I've known elves, dwarves, and trow all my life. I figured this was they were blockading this area. I thought I'd have to check just to make sure. Cause obviously I could looks like you can walk around. Seems like they're hanging anyone. They hanged my shoemaker last week. He must have done something wrong. The temple knows what it's doing. Free sword, man. Come on. Cabbage. Cabbage, uh, uh, carrots, and uh, potatoes. Cabbage, uh, carrots. Uh, Potatoes, cabbage, uh, uh, carrots, and uh, potatoes. <laughs> Aye. Shiver up the spine. Someone must have walked over your grave.
music seems to be coming like from right here, where there's no one. The neighborhood welcomes all races, protected by the Adventurer's Guild. Be it known that the Temple of the Sword Father seeks the adventurer Nath Oakmore for questioning in connection with necromancy and possession of forbidden texts. Anyone with information on his whereabouts is instructed to report to the temple immediately. By order of Bishop Hendred. Were you there before? They probably didn't pause. You're probably like those chatterbugs over here and you walked next to me. Here we are. The guild. Hmm, that mini-map kind of interesting. It's very line of sight ish. Oh Rebby, a new recruit. Place Elven Weapon. Turn of a page, word of a sage, sight of a fall, start of it all. I assume I do not have any such thing. Figure like there should be a secret somewhere around near the Adventurous Guild. All right, let's take a look at everything else now. Eh? Welcome to your skill tree. Each time you level up, you earn a skill point, which can be skill to un which can be spent to unlock a new skill. Click here to swap between the different skill trees of your adventure archetype. Example, attack, defense, utility. Your skill tree is broken into three tiers. To unlock the second tier of skills, you must spend eight skill points. To unlock the third tier, you must spend a total of 16 skill points. The first time you unlock a tier, you have to travel to the Adventures Guild to be judged worthy of advancement by the review board. During character creation, you may not refund skill points. Okay. Ready. This won't act as a total save, but you'll be at this spot when you return. Yeah, I would like to see if I could turn on grid mode. I made a list for myself of the four different versions. They're like the standard, the premium, the platinum, and the ultimate edition. The standard comes with the digital game, a digital code wheel, digital manual, digital guidebook, and a firehorn in-game item. If you get the premium, you get a high-res map, a high-res wallpaper, digital novellas, digital art books, digital songbooks, and the three following in-game items, an axe, boots, and some bardic items. You get the Platinum Edition, all it adds is a digital soundtrack, and if you get the Ultimate Edition, that adds the Bard's Tale Trilogy. I imagine the remixed version of it. It doesn't look like this game would have allowed me to import characters anyways. There were more folk killed last night. Some great beast, they said. And again, they blame us for it. What I just saw at Hendred's Hanging Tree was the last straw. We have to... Do you hear that? The Song of the Maiden. What does it foretell this time? Arrest the heretics! Burn this den of evil to the ground! This way, hero! Hurry! Would you like to create a custom character or keep Melody the Bard as your starting character? How's this version 4.18.3 already? The game just came out an hour ago. Bards use spell points to tell stories so grand that they carry mystic properties along with them, imbuing the listener with the essence of the song. Bards provide powerful buffs and debuffs to your party, though can be a serviceable combatant in a pinch. Bards gain their power through good humor and a wet whistle, meaning they gain spell points and bonuses from jinking on the job. They get Chop, Chug, and Sanctuary Score. Chop is a weak melee attack with a long reach, capable of attacking enemies directly in front of you as well as to both sides. Chug, drink magical booze to fuel your magical song. Watch out though, if you get too drunk you'll gain a brief boost of strength over passing on the drunken stupor. Sanctuary Score, sing a protective song that shields allies from harm. These are just your default class abilities and starting stats. In the next step you'll be able to further customize your character stats and starting abilities. Constitution is maximum health points, armor class negates every point of armor negates one point of incoming physical damage. Strength affects the amount done by most attacks, spell points, maximum spell point capacity during combat, and intelligence, your ability to focus while chilling or using stances. Practitioners are master manipulators of magic. 
and they excel at generating spell points and using them to unleash powerful spells to great effect. Practitioners can summon powerful monsters or assault crowds of enemies with gouts of fire, bolts of lightning, and psychic maelstroms. Among practitioners, there are several established disciplines, conjurers, magicians, sorcerers, wizards, and archmages. I would get to launch a, I would get arcane barrage, which would allow me to launch a bolt of pure arcane energy at any enemy on the battlefield. Charged bolt. This lightning attack only strikes enemies directly in front of the caster, but electrocutes everyone within range. Fighters may be brutish berserkers who fling themselves headlong into battle, and their generally superior stats carry them through the fight. Or they may be more tactical fighters who can duel with an opponent and come out unscathed. Either way, fighters belong at the fret of your group, trading blows with enemies and protecting your more fragile characters, while conversely being supported by those they protect. You get chop, which we've already read, and insult. Insult an enemy and evoke his ire, causing that enemy to charge the fighter, ignoring the rest of your party. Rogues excel at deception, misdirection, and finding the perfect opportunity to circumvent enemy defenses and land devastating killing blows on key targets. Rogues are also a clever bunch, lending a helping hand with disarming traps or negotiating with merchants. Rogues have the unique ability to conceal your party, making it easier to avoid or ambush enemies. You get Shiv, which is a weak melee attack with a long reach, capable of attacking enemies directly in front of you as well as to both sides. It also deals bonus damage to stunned enemies. Hide in Shadow allows you to slip away in the, into the shadows, making it impossible for enemies to target you with direct attacks. Attacks launched from the shadows deal bonus damage, but reveal your position. It's green there. Uh, so rogues have more strength. Alright, we're gonna go with rogue. Your culture determines aspects of your appearance as well as your starting cultural passive. Occupying the lowlands to the south, the Bade are the most civilized of caves people. They are a stocky, ruddy race of farmers and cowherds who live in stone-walled stone -walled towns ruled by hereditary lords. Until recently, the Bades worshipped the traditional gods of Caith, simple deities of harvest and hearth and hedgerow, but the growing influence of the Fatherites has pushed the cults underground. The Bay people are well educated and clever, gaining one bonus skill at levels 3, 10, and 18. So just three bonus skills total. Descended from the raiding peoples beyond the North Sea, the Einar live on the east coast of Cape and the many islands that dot the sea beyond it. They are the tallest and fairest of all the people of Cape and work as fishermen and shepherds and traders. Geographically separated from the Bay, they continue to worship the gods of their northern ancestors. These tall and powerful people have a legendary ability to hold a grudge. Each time they're stuck, struck in combat, they gain plus one strength for the remainder of the fight. Wow, that actually sounds really powerful. The Fichti, the, the Fichti live in the forests of the Northwest Cave, of Northwest Cave, and survive mostly by hunting and gathering, with only limited agriculture. They are small and dark-haired nature worshippers, and are nature worshippers, and are organized in the matriarchal tribes and clans. Of all the races of men, the, Fich the Fichti are, have the closest relationship with the elves, but even they regard the elves as beings to be feared and mistrusted. The Fichti, are fear the Fichti are fiercely protective of their friends and family, and will give their life for them if need be. Once per battle, a Fichti will absorb damage from an ally that would otherwise kill them. Many races and people come over the sea to Caith. Mercenaries from Ambardi, traders from Lestrus, Adia, and Far Bar 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 Barabi. Some stay and settle, others become adventurers. Outlanders may come from a variety of cultures, but they do all share a common struggle. The trials they face in, the com in coming to Scarabray have made them hardy and unflappable. They're immune to poison, fire, and bleeding. Oh. Being immune to fire sounds pretty good. Dwarves come from the realm of Canestia, where they live in vast underground holds. They're even more insular than the elves, but some find the hold life dull and claustrophobic. He looks kind of like an orc. Well, I mean, you're stereotypical orc, I mean. And so venture to the world of men, where they find that their skills in metalwork and stonework are in high demand. Dwarves are a stubborn and sturdy people who are supernaturally tenacious. Dwarves cannot be stunned, rooted, or forcibly moved. The home of the elves is the realm of Arborea, a place of endless forest and abundant magic that can only be reached by magic portal. In general, they stay there, engaging in internecine intrigues and ignoring the human realm entirely. Some come to the human world for sport, but others leave their own land behind to help and protect humankind. Elves are a well-educated race with innate magical abilities. Elves have plus 30% intelligence and plus 1 magical maximum spell points. 
Does this even? Yeah, he, he doesn't really. He doesn't really do magic. Uh, if I were a practitioner, I probably would have better. Okay. Short, scrappy, and mischievous, trowel are both loved and feared by the people of Cave. The old tales say a trowel around the house is good luck, and some people leave out food for them. Like, uh, what was the what was the thing called in Hero Quest Four? Quest for Glory Four, Demo Vi or something like that. The father, I'd say that there are dirty thieves who are sickened babies in their cribs. Really, they're just ordinary folks trying to get along as best they can, which sometimes means taking advantage of human generosity. Ever the opportunist, the trial party trial's party gains one opportunity when they land a killing blow. This may happen only once per turn. I don't know what that means, but let's try that. Like that, I, I don't. What opportunity? What is an opportunity? That doesn't tell me what that means. It's such an important decision in the game. I assume selecting a race. Does that mean I get a free turn, free attack? I, I'm gonna assume that means a free attack, but I have no idea. You've got to pay for what you've done. Your character's name, voice, and portrait selections do not affect any stats or abilities. You make me sick. Run along now, or I shall have to... This isn't my first fight, you know. It hurts me just to look at you. It would be so nice if you weren't here. Watch out, or I'll hurt you. Were you born this annoying, or did you study? <laughs> Why are you being so... Awful. You're gonna get what's co- If you make me fight- If you do- You don't- Why do you even- You are making me very, very tired. It would be so nice if you weren't here. Do your worst. Try me. If you make me fight, I'll kill you. It hurts me just to look at you. You have no honor. How can you prevail when we have right on our side? This isn't my first fight, you know. Watch out, or I'll hurt you. Go on home, you niblet. When all this is over, I'm pulling your teeth out of my boot heels. Run along now, or I shall have to spank you. Hold on. Are, are they different voices? Come on, it hurts me just to look at you. You make me sick. How can you prevail when we have right on our side? Okay, maybe not. Come on. Were you born this annoying? If you make me fight, I'll kill you. I shall cleanse you from this earth. Earth. <laughs> Exist. Okay, we're well, renaming you to. We'll, we'll keep you as Melody. I, I assume this is not adding someone to my party, but this is the. I'm remaking Melody to be this. I thought you said you couldn't refund during skill cr um, character creation. Can I even look at the rest? Oh, these are the tiers. Okay, so this is like... So I start here, I assume. Basic combat. Okay, I was thinking the other way around. Like, this is the first tier, second tier, third tier, and I was trying to zoom up. Commander, plus one opportunity, one per party. I don't know what opportunity means. Hold on, I'm gonna see if I can open up the manual, whatever, wherever that is. I don't know where the manual is, so... I'm gonna just keep looking at stuff.
possible an opportunity one per party. I don't know. I, don't. I, I assume this means that only one Robo Browser um, effect can take place. So even if I had multiple bards, I wouldn't be able to get stack Robo Browser. But I should be able to, I assume by reading this, stack Robo Browser and Commander, each giving plus one opportunity. Opportunity. Let me look this up. Okay, maybe it's not as good as I think it is. It sounds like I, the only thing I can find so far. Remember, the game was just released about two hours ago, and it took me an hour to download it. Um, it is a guide from, or is a is a web web page from Mercury News. I don't know what website this is, and it says the following. To actually do battle, players have opportunity points tied to each character. Each action, such as an attack or generating spell energy, consumes those points. As players level their characters and grow more powerful, they can gain more opportunity points. So it sounds like it's kind of like the opposite of the effort system from uh, Space Wolf. Basically, action points. So maybe maybe I'll go with uh, immune to poison, fire, and bleeding instead. So what else do we have? That cannot be stunned or moved. Each time they're struck in combat, they gain plus one strength for the remainder of the fight. In Dragon War and Might and Magic 2, you could face 20 enemies at one time, so I, I don't think it's gonna... That sounds really powerful, I have no idea. Yeah, you know what, we'll do that instead of being immune to fire. And eight skill. Wait, there's only six things to spend here. Or, hold on, is it is it six here and then like another anywhere else or what? I think they didn't say I need to spend eight skill points in order to get to the tier two. He's lockpick. Training and lockpick. Okay, so it looks like, yeah. It, okay, yes. So it is in that entire tier. Okay. I guess they do use intelligence for something. Not sure what yet, though. So what was the other thing? Elf. 30% more intelligence and plus one maximum spell points. I don't think that says... Unless I can get a lot of intelligence from levels. I assume all I get from levels are skill points, so... I could get four... So 30% of seven points. That's, that's as much intelligence as I would get. I think I'd rather have plus one strength for getting hit.
but I need those all to get that. Yeah. Which would then get down to these, okay. Alright, after much, much thinking, we're gonna get Strength 1, Scrapper Novice, and Critical Hit Bows and Daggers. I'm just trying to plan out eight, eight skill points in Tier 1 that I'm gonna get across the different trees and figure out how to, ways to get down to the bottom of things that I want. Okay, I, I guess that's it. Are you sure you want to continue? You will not be able to make any further changes to this character's arch arch archetype, culture, or appearance after this point. Knife to meet you. <laughs> I think I spent like half an hour staring at the character creation screen. Can I turn on grid mood yet? No. and figure a way to protect ourselves. The Adventurer's Guild from back before the old town was buried is still here after all these years. Just a little filthier and liable to collapse. At least it's well hidden. No danger of another visit from the Fatherites. Come on. We're looking for a green door. I guess that was just a waypoint. Do not enter. By order of the temple, this property is condemned. Disease, corruption, or abominations may be found within. Do not enter. I heard somebody. I kept clicking on it, but... I guess I was moving my mouse cursor off it too fast. Am I supposed to hold it down or something? Alright, well whatever. Hold on, hero. You'd better touch that lockstone. Lockstones have been around since before the All War. And it's always good to give them a rub, particularly before a fight. They can give you a second chance if things go wrong. There. Now you're safe. No matter what befalls, you'll come right back to here. Okay, why didn't everybody else use this lockstone? <laughs> I see, okay. That makes sense now. That's why I was having trouble with it before.
adventurers. How did they escape the fire? Bide a moment. Don't think these are any friends of ours. No, they're up to mischief. We'll have to fight them, I fear. Look out, an enemy. Charge enemies before they spot you to get first strike. If they spot you first, they'll get first turn. Kill! Kill for the master! What is good, I don't we? Combat in Bard's Tale is turn based. You have three opportunity points to spend each turn. This number will increase as you progress. Your adventurers have abilities that cost opportunity to activate. The only way to recover opportunity after it is spent is to end your turn. What do you got? Me? On your word. Oh. Really? Okay, I should have made her do something. Come invisible up to two years or until you attack. Gain plus twenty percent strength when attacking. Stop. So long. Here. Stepping by. Ah! Oh. Whatever. Okay, Ready? so it's opportunity for yeah. the whole party. I'm not sure I like that. Kill for the masters. What masters, I wonder? I. I have nine remaining potions. Is that what that means? Yeah. Okay. I don't want to actually. I don't want to actually do that. How else can I heal? Is that the only way to heal? Go in now. Let's try that battle again then. Adventurers? How did they escape the fire? Wait a moment. Don't think these are any friends of ours. No. Kill! Kill for the master! Right. Who wants to die? Well, now that I've experienced combat, I kind of have a better idea. I don't like that. That's 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 a that's a bad thing. See, in game design, you often have to create permanent choices for your character. <laughs> race and class and such like that before you even know how the game world works like plus one opportunity didn't know what that meant I thought it sounded really good then i heard you know it sounded really good but i wasn't sure if i was just reading too much into it now that being said all it does is give me an extra opportunity for when i kill somebody i could use that but once per turn however so i'm not sure if this will be a full series uh I guess it really depends if I if, if I start really getting the blast out of the game. Right now, I've got a lot on my plate. I've got to finish Nino Kuni 2. I've got to finish Dragon Quest 11, and I've got to finish editing Dragon Quest Heroes 2. Adding a fourth game to that mix puts me really behind. 
Out of my way. for the masters. What masters, I wonder? Aye. Searching for us, I'll wager. We better steer clear. Me? None of us are gonna die here. Combat in the Bard's Tale takes place on a 4x4 grid, with your party standing on one side and enemy standing on the other. Movement in combat is critical. Which enemy an adventure hits depends entirely on where they stand on the battlefield and the targeting pattern of the building they're using. On your word. I don't think it should matter. Uh, I guess if I do this, I assume that means I'll rotate spots with them. So what we'll do is, let me think here. Move. Hmm. Coming through. Goes up to two spots away, so ready. That was a nasty scrap. Let's see to our wounds. 
You've taken some damage. Heal up before your next fight by eating food. Right click to bring up the party bar. Click the inventory button or press I default to open your inventory. And then right click on the hearty stew to eat it. Eating food heals your entire party. I? This is like better for some reason. More value, but that's about it. Really? Hey? What? So it looks like I probably have to push it this way. I wonder if I can trick the game at all. If I press back against this thing, I almost did it. <laughs> the idea is basically that I kind of glitch into the block and then I push it forward the direction I'm looking at. <laughs> it's probably just the direction I'm standing in, the orientation to it. Yeah, that's the direction I'm staying in orientation to it, so it wouldn't work. Oh, jeez. That heals me? Why would I want to eat the stew, then? Don't tell me to eat the stew. I kind of want to go back and create a trial now. Hit points, huh? On your word. Aha! Really? So I have plus... Yeah, I do have two bonus strength. Wow. On your word. There's another luck stone. 
This is an ancient luck stone. You find these all over the wilds and dungeons. Okay, if you can choose to save your game at one of these luck stones, or if you're daring, you can instead consume the luck stone's magic, destroying the stone, but gaining experience for your entire party. Choose wisely. Safe and sorry, I always say. Interesting. So why? What's to stop me from consuming it and then, and then just going back to the other one? Hey, it heals me, anyways. You fools! You let them scatter! Now we shall have to drag them out again! The people must see what a danger these outcasts are! Find them! Find them! Serpent. More paladins. Can't let them spot us. Edge left and stick to the shadows. The Adventurer's Guild is just around the corner. This will be fun. Watch out, those enemies will wipe the floor with you, so you best steer clear. If you look at an enemy group from a moderate distance away, you can detect how strong they are compared to you. Green enemies are easy, yellow enemies are even. Orange enemies are challenging, and red enemies are impossible. Stealthy. What is that? One eye, one leg, one arm. This... is it a fashion? I've sung songs about them, but I never thought I'd see one. Okay. Beware! Adventurers are not your friends. Only the temple has the authority to hunt abominations and arrest evildoers. Vigilantism will not be tolerated. Report any unauthorized hunting to the temple. Waiting for him to come back, but you're the boss. Ooh, that's probably going to defeat me. <laughs> Stunned? Oh, that's good. That's actually very good for me. Whatever. Bye. On your word. Ten percent chance to stun target. Huh. Watch out, that Pachan is focusing its hypnotic eye attack. It'll kill everyone in front of it. If you don't move your adventure out of the way before it fires, you can also stop an enemy from focusing by hitting them with mental damage. Rabbi's head knocker ability deals mental damage. Give it a try. Ready? Oh. 
problem. Uh, let me just... Sure, go in now. On your word. What happens if my stealth character is in front? I assume she'll get hit. Like, he probably wouldn't know to target her, but I bet she'll probably hit. Here. Yeah. Is that all he can do? Also, I was disappointed in my stealth world at that time, but... There's still all these enemies I gotta fight. I can't pick that one up. Stay in the camp. Them things dragged down my old dad to gallop. Ashamed to say, I kept running. You want? Forgive me, my bile. It is not you who have stirred it, but these cursed clods who broke my best lute and battered me with their oafish fists. If you need an instrument, I have a few I am willing to sell. I am trying to raise enough coin to return to the Everwood. The venture has not so far been a success. A mob, fevered by the Fatherites. They accused me of trying to lure some badish boy into the shadows, then set upon me with fist and boot. Had not a fellow adventurer been passing, I've no doubt I would have hung from their tree. Fortunately, a dwarf named Dalgleish saw my peril and dragged me to safety, taking many blows himself. I am in his debt. Not the finest instruments you'll ever find. 
Just a few I've acquired over the years. Please. May you have better fortune than your fair friend, Mary. Uh, do not fear me, friends. I, I, I beg you. Yes, I am a fatherite, but I no longer take orders from Bishop Henry or any of his compatriots. It is they who are not fatherites, for they have abandoned the sword father's tenets. Thus, I have broken with them and come here to this refuge to do what a priest must always do. Help the helpless and teach those who wish to learn. Okay, there's a lot of dialogue here. <laughs> the sword father was a man once, a king of Lestrus who valiantly drove out foreign invaders and sacrificed himself for the security of his people. Such was his honor and goodness that he became a god upon his death and his daughter, known as the Blessed Lady, an all-merciful goddess. Together, they watch over mankind, the Father inspiring them in times of trouble, the Blessed Lady comforting them when the storm has passed. He did not seem so terrible when first he arrived. Ambitious, yes, but still compassionate and with a keen intellect that was never satisfied. Then slowly his mind became less flexible, his fears more consuming and his compassion reserved only for his own kind. Where once the temples helped all, Henry ordered that only the faithful be fed and all others be turned away. It only got worse from there, as you know, and I now fear he has lost his sanity entirely. I was reprimanded for aiding a dwarf. And when I defended myself, Henry demanded I give up my ministry. I left without looking back. But I haven't left the true church, only Henry's church, which is not and shall never be mine. Well, I, I do what I can, healing, comforting, feeding, advising. If you are sick or wounded, I will be happy to help you. Let me see what ails you. If you seek to channel the power of your God for good works, yes, yes, I, I, I can show you. First, however, I would ask a favor. Some of Henry's so-called paladins have looted sacred relics and are wearing them as Medals, it seems. As if covering one's self in holy artifacts made one more holy. Preposterous. I know Paladin Captain Beckwith, who patrols the road near Fetter Cairn, wears one. If you could get it from him, so I may return it to its proper place, I would believe that you have the fortitude and commitment to learn what I have to teach. Bless you, friends. Stay still. You must rest. I had the cursor over you a second ago. Hi. Cabbage, carrots, potatoes. Cabbage, carrots, and uh, potatoes. Hi. Welcome, friend. I'm Resa, and this is Palifax. 
How can we help you? New folks arrive in here every day, driven out of their homes by monsters or paladins or what have you, and they all need to eat and sleep. Oh, I haven't much, but we share what we have. If you need food, it's there. A place to lie down, the houses across the way are safe, and if you're wounded, get in that line there. We'll see to you as soon as we can. It was all chaos here when the attack started, so somebody had to organise. Me and Palifax here, m my husband, we started finding blankets and food for the rest and, and keeping watch as best we could. Not doing too bad so far, but there's more folk coming in every day. It'll get worse before it gets better. Ah, my bold, brave husband. Always manages to find trouble where no one else can. Good thing for a guard, I suppose. Not so easy on his wife, though. Well, at least we're in trouble together this time. Help out if you can. We need it. Poor folk. More every day. Where are we going to fit them all? Ah, fellow Einar. Happy to help a countryman. If you need food or healing, see my wife here, Risa. If you need a blade or some leather on your back, see me. And if you're fit enough, we could use some help holding back the darkness, as the city watch ain't likely to help us down here. And why shouldn't I be? Was with them for 30 years until this Henred becomes Bishop of the Fatherites. Then all of a sudden being Einar is a sin, fired for worshipping the wrong gods, took my house and tried to burn poor Racer as a witch. Pooh! Spent half my life arresting the rats that lived in Scarabray below, and now I'm down here helping them. Oh, it's a funny old world, eh? I've got some likely lads patrolling the camp. But what we really need is some hardy souls to go into the dark and clear some streets. Things seem to be breeding in there. Horrible things. Racer's my wife. Met her at her father's tavern. Oh, she wouldn't look at me at first. But then, well, I guess she got used to me. I won't find a kinder person in all of Keith. I don't know how I got so lucky. Have a look. Thanks for looking. So you're gonna send me to go do your work for you, but you won't even let me borrow any of those blades. Here we are. I told Orlo not to let anybody in who didn't give him the Wildland whistle. Really, game? You're gonna enter? I guess I could disable tutorial, but how about you don't put a tutorial on top of someone's dialogue? You just learned your first song of exploration. Songs of exploration can ex affect the world in many different ways. First, bring up the party bar. Next, reveal your abilities. Finally, select the wild end whistle to play it and open the door to the Adventures Guild. Give it a try. In a minute, I want to finish exploring. Now's the perfect time. Everybody's out of their houses, left all their valuables behind. But what about the monsters? What if we get eight? We'll be careful, that's all. And if we're caught, well, I run faster than you, so that's all right. Oi! That's no funny! Maybe I should have done that afterwards. Wait, no. I think I read that the characters level up with your main hero. I think. I don't know. We'll see. You've leveled up. Each time your adventures level up, they earn a skill point. Spend your skill points in your skill tree to grow in power, learn new abilities, and train to use new gear. Open your skill tree by pressing K, default, or by right-clicking and choosing the skill tree at the top of the screen. Okay, so I kind of understand that a little more now. Um, so I need a few more points in some of that stuff here.
We'll see what I get inside this Avengers Guild. Then we'll figure things out. I assume I get more characters now that I'm at the old Avengers Guild. So if I should have, I may have wanted to create characters or something here first, and then touch that shrine. That's the tune. Welcome, friend. Hello, Robbie. Glad to see you in one piece. 